Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie for your Tuesday podcast. Um, team intervention on the show today. Whipper's yeah, brought this yeah. forward and oh, it's a bit raunchy, this one. It's a bit well, full on. I don't think it's fit for air. It depends how you look at it. I mean, if you were to peer over your back fence and see, I don't know, one of Australia's uh, biggest named celebrities painting their fence completely nude, um, you'd be oh. interested. You'd be interested in having a I bit of a look. I wouldn't mind seeing that summer bay. That's you know sure. what I mean, mate? I reckon the sun's shining out of that bay over and over oh, again. Oh, for goodness sake. Wouldn't mind getting Gosh. out of that this Yabby is the Creek. Whole, this is the hot... <laughs> Met the wouldn't mangrove ri- s- <laughs> swim up mangrove river. Oh my god! I'll tell you what, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the lesser known mm. outer suburb. Of, oh, was it? Of, uh, <laughs> Summer Bay, just was... just around the corner from mm. Yabby Creek. Oh my god! I hope there's no yabbies up that creek. <laughs> I think, anyway, so... I've told Whipper something. Uh, just as a, an aside, it sounds like I have initiated a really creepy conversation, which I didn't. It was a private exchange and an even more private moment that I spent with myself because I deserve it. Oh, my God. Have a look at that flame and glow. Oh, find out what I did and apparently what I just am mad for doing <laughs> on the podcast. Get into it. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I do think mother-in-laws get a bad rap sometimes, I agree. you got to love your mother-in-law. Yeah. It's like a default joke, isn't it? Oh, my bloody mother-in-law. The outlaws are here to stay. <laughs> yeah. You gotta love them oh, for a so certain annoying. amount of time, but they do sometimes like to hang around. They do like to hang around, or sometimes they'll even buy the house next door. Oh my god! Or they'll drop in because they're up the road. I mean, there are there are benefits to having mo- uh, a mother-in-law mm, or cleaning. in-laws. No, that live far away. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but then you speak to those people. You know, they might be British or they're from interstate. And then when they see the in-laws, they have to come and stay in the home. So it's uh, it's like, mm. well, I mean, which would you choose? The in-laws that are going to come and stay yeah, hard, for weeks on end or the ones that are going to pop in for a cup of tea? What always week. concerned me too, you hear the stories where the mother-in-law will have a key to the house. So you might get home and she will have thought, I'll just pop round and help with the ironing or a bit of the cleaning. And no. you come home and there she is on the couch having lunch. Yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, I've got a key. I'm just here to help. But don't uh, you you're f- eating my food. But isn't it nice? Some people don't have mums and they would wish for their mum to be mm. on the couch having a sandwich. My mum has a key to my house. Does she? Mm. Bit different. Why? Yeah, but see, your that's your mum. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. That's not your, yeah, that's your mum. <laughs> don't make me spell out the family tree for you, mate. Oh, yeah, I, well, I had a I've mate. had partners, and <laughs> oh, that, makes, that makes yeah. mum and mother-in-law. Well, that's <laughs> I, I've got a mate whose okay. in-laws... I've got a mate whose in-laws are nudists. Oh. So sometimes... I'm not joking, and now he's used oh, to it, but right. sometimes he comes home and the mother-in-law is vacuuming the house... Completely stuck. No, you made that up, Fitzy. No, that's true. I am that not cannot, joking. That cannot be Ka- true. Kate, and it's got to the point now where everyone's comfortable with each other, it's fine, but he will, he will come home from work and he'll go, oh, my God, mm-hmm. she's 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 under the table and she's just <laughs> going for it with the Dyson. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> vacuuming. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing that you've hired it's her to own- vacuum your place. <laughs> Actually, there is a business in that. Isn't there? Don't they do? Isn't that? Isn't there you can, nude you hairdressers? Can pay, oh, well, I know you can pay nude maids. Yeah, or to some come sort of lingerie of, maid. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I'm sure you probably know, know more about it. I don't, know. I don't know why we're talking about this because this whole story is meant to be about passive aggressive gifts, mm-hmm. but it happened to be from the mother-in-law. Okay. And I mean, stick with me here. Either this woman just wants to be really helpful, or She's being really passive aggressive because she's written a note and given it to her daughter in law for Christmas. Yeah. Um, with a list of things that maybe maybe her daughter in law could have a think about that might make oh. her life a little bit easier with the children. Okay. You know, like if you maybe if you try this, um, it, it, they might behave for you a little bit better. Or maybe your life and my son's life might be nicer. And this was if a you gift? try a few of these little things, darling. It all depends on how it's delivered. Isn't it? Because you know, if someone says, "Hey, I think routine can be crucial for a kid growing up. Why don't you work on that?" That's different to writing out a planner. Oh, absolutely. And I don't. I. I mean, it, it is all in the delivery. I, I'm 
not sure that even saying, why don't you work on that? Yeah can be helpful mm. at times. So she's written, you know, the, uh, for Christmas she gave it to her. So it's a list of, I think that the kids should be up at this time and she's written a schedule. So up at this time, breakfast at this time, these are the kinds of foods right. that they should eat. Oh. I mean, look, this is on the internet, mm. so I'm sure this now has a life of its own and maybe they've had yeah. discussions around the kitchen doing a bit of n- nude, vacuuming nude vacuuming together. <laughs> Do you know the one discussing. my mum does? She right. does a lot of, um, well, you know whose fault that is. Is. Oh, and rhetorical question. Uh, Talking about our three and a half year old Francesca, who's a bit of a loose unit um, and hard to control. <laughs> and then, you know what? You know what I find hilarious? As they've got older, mum and dad, yeah. they their whispering is quite loud. So I'll go upstairs to put the kids to bed and I can hear them going, well, John, it seems that that's what's happening. And then John will be going, well, Christine, you've got to understand. And then yeah. I'll go, guys, I Where's can the hear Dyson? it. I can hear everything. <laughs> come on, one come thing. on, Christine. Get back to the hoovering. <laughs> You're only a what if away from a New Year getaway with whatif.com. Aussies just know how to holiday. It's in our DNA. Book your accommodation, flights, car hire, and more, all on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? I didn't plan an intervention this early on in 2024, but when the alarm goes off in my mind, I think we have to get onto it. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm all for that, don't mm. you think, Fitzy? Let's get, kind of proceed, yeah. start how you want to. Approval to proceed. Something mm. follow on. Yeah, ex- yeah. <laughs> well said, Kate Ritchie. Um, well, I'm actually watching Peaky Blinders at the moment, and there's a lot of family interventions and family meetings. So let's uh, do this, okay. and let's not end like the Peaky yeah. Blinders with a razor blade coming out of my hat. No. But how, what, do you, what road would you like to go down? I'd like to go down an interesting one where I wandered into um, in, into a store the other day, and I know the lady in there at Bailey Nelson, the glasses store. I said, "How are you, Sandy?" I said, my glasses are broken. Can you fix them? She said, Kate was in here the other day. Oh, I know Sandy. She's yeah, Sandy, lovely. Yeah, she's fantastic. And Sandy, I said, oh, that's great. Um, how was Kate? And she said, oh, what was strange? Was she had a lot of paint on her. And I went, oh, right. She must have been doing a bit of painting. So I get in the car and I did a bit of a funny because I found out what glasses you bought, Kate. And then I tried on the same pair and then sent you a selfie going, what do you think of these? So that was really funny stuff. So it started the year well. And then it was a kind of cute little photo too Mm. because I'd have these great new reading glasses that are pink 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 in colour. So, you know, it was Whipper looked cute. Yeah, it was really, really funny. Um, I then rang Kate on the way home and I said, oh, look, I've just been into Bailey Nelson. You've been doing a bit bit of handy work around the yard, have you? Hmm. And I know from the fact that you had been trying to paint around the pool area and your back fence and all of that gear, right? And you didn't want to get a tradie because you're saying, I'm putting I'm putting blokes out of work. I'm putting the blokes out of work. Is that what I said? I'll do all the handiwork around here. Well, you can't get a tradesman in the lead up to Christmas. So you decided to do it yourself. Now, and and it, was more, it was more around the therapy of the painting okay. as well. It was quite therapeutic, was it? It was. Well, you know what? This is... I deserved to have the walls painted. And yeah. I was going to do it myself. That's what and my you know head, what? that's and what my it, head noise was doing. Yeah. I deserved to have painted walls around the pool. Well, it's also, you can look at that wall for the rest of your life, Kate, and go, that's mine. I did that. Riveting. See that? See yeah. see that? Mm. See that bit where it probably bled a little bit too much in the corner there? Yeah. I did that. Hang I on a second. That my, was me. My painting skills are very good. I do the tape oh, and everything. I, are you, you I'm going to no, send you some you're photos. No Doe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. Can we get to the interesting part of the story? I then made a bit of a joke because I know that on a sunny day... Ms. Ritchie yeah. might actually take the kid off for a bit of sunbaking. So when it, you <laughs> Why told, are you doing well, this? So when you I told, didn't know what you were doing. You can't talk about this. So when you told me that you'd been in the backyard painting, I went, you didn't do it with your clothes off, did you? Throw away line as a joke. Matter of fact, she did. Oh, what? So Kate Ritchie <laughs> painted the back fence. Not the back fence. Completely nude. Well, no, it's just talking about the mother-in-law that I knew this morning who vacuums in the nude, and Kate said no one does that, does she? She she got a bit of paint on her clothes and then thought, how do I fix that? 
take the clothes off. And if I'm if I'm correct in saying, Kate, because what, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you things that we maybe we throw t- away and talk about? Mm-hmm. And I say for shock value, it's not even true. Well, we we <laughs> joked we joked about it on the phone, and. <laughs> I think it may have also been true, but at one point when you were sort of painting in the nude, you took a moment and a break just to lie down for some sunbaking and yeah. even pointed the moon at the sun. No, I did not! Quite a bit of bleaching. Oh, Are we bleaching no. now? The, dark, the, darkest, the darkest of moons stared back at the sun. For a little what, bit of vitamin bru- D around what, the old. What, br- what brush do you use for that bit? <laughs> oh, the, like you need the know. one with the <laughs> angle fits. <laughs> now, you I, need a spray I, gun. Look, look, all lo- okay. okay. Did, did you paint the fence in the nude? Yes. Great. That's great. Wow. Was it and liberating? Like, did you. No, did, is oh, it, that's we, old news for me. No, but did, did, did you feel like, were you sunbaking in the nude and went, you know what, I'm going to finish off the painting. This feels great. I, I'm not wearing anything and I'm painting the back fence. This feels great. I didn't start out with sunbaking. I thought, you know what, I'd done some gardening. I pulled out, speaking of cactuses, yeah, I pulled in, cactus ca- out, in and you? out, c- cactuses and things. And then I thought, oh, gosh, I'm filthy. Uh, but I want to finish the paint. I want to do the painting today. How did this not end up in my book? So, so... I I just thought, get the get the get your gear off, get all this dirt off, yeah, the yeah. soil and stuff from the old succulents, and then I thought, it's just me here, it's the holidays, I'm a grown up, this is my house, um, and I'm painting because I deserve it, and yeah. and why don't I put a hat on? I had. Do you know what I had? I had a Bunnings hat. No, it was the because I have the Akubra, the Alf Stewart Akubra, the um, what's that oh, one called? The Oberon, to, I think it's he called. He would love to know so that. I, I had my Alf Stewart oh. hat on. You can't see into the yard oh unless God. you're in the apartments up at the top, up at the top. So of they the can street. see in. Well, which which were. Which I'm saying there will be a pap that will get this now, and I and I already know what the headline is in the Daily Mail. What is it? Paints her home and throws her clothes away. That's oh, good. that's, that's a really good. One. good. I mean, I've that's never seen bad. Scotty Cam doing that. Well, now you've alerted the neighbours. I, I, I'll turn up with my drone, and bring it over the back fence. I didn't even think about drones. Anyway, you know what? Who look? look I'm too old to be worried about that stuff anymore. Now, that would be a good version of The Block, wouldn't it? Have you ever thought about doing a nude version of The Block? <laughs> oh, that's, that's not Starring bad. Starring Kate. Oh, Keith's arrived. God. He's God. turned up early. Keith. That's, <laughs> not a br- that's not a brush, Keith. No, no, Keith, we've finished filming. You can go home now. <laughs> Keith, can, we, can you get out of the back of her car? <laughs> Keith. Well, as, as long as Scotty Cam's mother doesn't arrive. Gay Cam. <laughs> Don't Google it. Is it? Is that her name? Yeah, oh, yeah. bless her. Don't Google image that one. Bless her. You got all sorts of gear, which is a bit like what you did in the backyard. <laughs> you know what? I uh, Ten points for nude painting. Get into it. Do you do any handiwork in the backyard completely naked? you got to be careful with the sander and thing, haven't you? <coughs> How's it feeling down, what? down there? What do you mean? Well, after the... Sun it's stuff. just a gradual bit of sun. And also, you're moving in and out of the shady areas. <laughs> Your bo- you know, you move when you move the paint and, mm. the, st- and the step ladder. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm painting it. It was so glamorous. I mean, I've always pay- struggled to find the vitamin D spot. <laughs> <laughs> we found out, um, admitted to me over the phone, Kate, you'd painted the fence out in the backyard completely nude. I, didn't realise that was the appropriate dress for doing handyman work around the yard. Can, can we, um, I do, let's just be very clear about the fact that when you say I revealed that I did this to you over the phone, that sounds quite provocative, like I was saying... Well, you rang me in, hey, in a very slow voice. Hey, Whipper. Oh, I'm painting the back fence. You know, like, you Wearing said... you at the moment. Exactly. You, you, With a brush or a you, roller. You did. 
did throw away question yeah. around whether I had my gear in and I said, well, funny you should say that. I did get a bit of extra sun yes. today. I mean, careful, of course, with my Alf Stewart hat and a, and a, a bit mm. of S- SPF, but I thought, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and throw myself into this hot girl summer. Why not? Because you can. <laughs> You're not the only one, Adam, in Penrith. Um, he's in a hot girl summer. Hey, Adam. <laughs> Hey there, guys. How you doing? Love the show. Welcome back. Thanks, buddy. You've Thank called you. up to support Kate this morning. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I have a, um, or I know two instances um, where um, two separate occasions people have been uh, gardening in the nude. Um, one was um, my best mate's, or my one of my best mate's um, dad's, uh, he went on the roof and yep. gardened completely starkers. Okay. Yep. I did he was uh, pulling out the um, the um, leaves from the gutters and stuff like that and cleaning it. Um, on the roof. But that's an indecent exposure, isn't it? You, you, no, I right. think you're confusing gardening and a criminal <laughs> offence. <laughs> God. Have a look at the size of those gutters. <laughs> that's the downpipe oh, for that one's blocked again. But he's an exhibitionist. He wants he other people to see him. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was not like an exhibitionist. He was. He was a naturist by, right. by right, nature. Okay. So yeah, he liked doing that stuff. He didn't care, you naturist. know, kind of thing. But they did have neighbourhood disputes with that. So yeah. Anyway, I won't go into that. Um, <laughs> the other one was I used to live with a mate and. Um, one day I got home and I saw him out the back and he was um we he had like chili plants. Yeah. And he was actually in the in the garden in the nude, um, actually attending to his chili plants. And he actually had to run back in the house, um, screaming, um, his hands Yeah. He um put his hands Touched. down to his old fella and yep, anyway, he was in a lot of pain because the chili had actually made its way onto his He's old yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that'll teach him. I've done that one. <laughs> I have what? done that one. Where you chop a chili and then you go for a wee and the next thing you know, you need to run it under the tap for a while. Yeah. That's not going to do it. Yeah, you can't. Just to you knock you it gotta, on you got to dip it into milk. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Tom's, been, Tom's been busted in the Nova kitchen doing that plenty of times. I don't feel like I'm Milo this morning. <laughs> and I, nowadays, I just look at him and go, chili again? He goes, yep. <laughs> Breakfast of Champions, Tommy. Got me out with the old light oh, start, guys. My yeah. milkshake brings all the boys oh, to the yard. Tom doesn't. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Are you a bit of a lead foot? Do you have a few Ooh, demerit points? I haven't got many um, left. Well, this is the thing. Minzy's jumped on board here, and I, I didn't even know that he did this, but this was back halfway through the year last year. He said, look, if you can go a year without um, getting any blemishes on your record, right, no demerit points at all, I'm going to wipe your demerit points. So you have to go oh. a year. But see, he's brought it back six months now because t- tomorrow, if you, over the Christmas break in the last six mm-hmm. months, if you have not done anything wrong on the road, they're going to get rid of your demerit points. In a six-month period? Yes. Wow. I could be back to zero. I've been nervously getting around driving on ten. Normally, you have to wait three years for your points to be wiped, but Mm. Chris Min said, we are rewarding motorists who have maintained a clean driving record for 12 months, but they've brought this back six months. So, this is actually, tomorrow is the day, Jan 17. Go and check your demerits at the end of tomorrow and yeah. see if they've been wiped. Hey, Minzy, it's a quick great, one. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening, Chris, I know you're a big fan of the show and he also enjoys the podcast. Um, <laughs> I got three demerit points for parking mm. in the wrong area. Was it a nice stopping, though? A, well, now, I'm there's, not, that's there's not the a driving. operative words there, wrong area. Well, it was a school <laughs> zone and I didn't even know. Oh. But I parked... So it wasn't a driving offence because I wasn't driving. But you drove there. I parked in the wrong spot. It's an offence. So, Chris, if you could get rid of that ridiculous demerit point loss that I incurred, that would be great. But six months. How? When when did you when did you get that fine? 
Um, I don't know. I'd have to go back, but it doesn't feel like it was long ago. You know what? I got to the stage two where I lost 13 points. 13, isn't it? Is that how many you got? I think so. Oh, yeah. Well, you, and yeah, I you hit, get 12 or something. Yeah, I, hit, I, I hit the mark anyway, 12 or 13. I hit the mark and then had the option of lose my license for three months or drive carefully for six or 12 months without losing a demerit point. But you know what? The concern is there because I took the driving option so I could continue on the road, but I couldn't lose a demerit point. And if mm. I did, then I'd lose my license. Yep. But you become so cautious, you're almost overthinking on the road. And the most dangerous thing on the road is indecision. And when you, you start to panic, when you see an amber light, you go, I've got to stop now. So you, it's almost a little bit risky to oh, do it. Oh, so you're being... You're, oh, it, my God. They're forcing your hand yeah, to I'm break in, the law. I'm in a so- 60 zone doing 30. Did you know that if you don't pay your parking fines... I don't know if this is a new thing. Mm-hmm. If you don't pay the parking fines, they'll cancel the regist- registration of your car. Yeah, they will. And your speeding fines. What? Any road offences. Yeah, if you don't pay, like... And even if it's not... I mean, speeding I kind of get because that is you're doing the wrong thing driving but the it, parking offenses if you don't they'll yeah they just um Kate, this cancel is, it until you pay it and then they reinstate it this is the biggest black mark on uh sydney's traffic issue because the road rules um and the licensing offense and the registration mm. if they're not paid and you lose your rego mm. right and you don't even know you don't even know. They don't call you. They don't email you, right? They'll send you, you a letter in the mail. You may not have got the now, letter. If you don't get that letter, you're then driving an unregistered vehicle, which yeah. means the insurance isn't warranted. Mm. So, so you, know, you are they, then... They, they, no, they don't. You are they then... They do at, give you... Well, they, they have do to. They send have to you tell you that you... They send you a letter. They send you a letter. So and they send you a backup so, letter. So, you don't, so, they, so if you don't got get that letter, this. right... And they've got all these other ways. They could text you. They could call you. They could email you. Can't you. Trust, you can't trust texts right. from anyone now. No, they can, they can no. call you, right? No, and if you, and if they, and if you don't get that letter, the snail mail, right? If you don't get that letter... Say that about Australia Post. They're brilliant. No, they have been good. Um, then you are unregistered and uninsured. Yeah. And if you were to hit somebody, yeah. Kate Ritchie, or hit another car... You could be financially destroyed. You could be personally destroyed. Yeah, I, abs- I understand what you're destroyed. saying, but you've probably received oh, it's the, a disgrace. The the the, the 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 fine in the mail. Then you've had two reminders. Then you've had a letter from whoever they yeah. are that mm. say we are going to cancel your registration. Then they give you a final warning for the cancellation yeah. of the registration. Okay, what if you've moved house, right? I understand and you all keep of that. getting the mail because of the last yeah, see, minute you moved house. That's your problem, mate. You've got to tell them what your new address Chris is. Chris Minns I don't think that. I don't think it's the biggest black it's, mark on it's, our uh, roads. Yes, it is. Gosh. It's worse than the, than the Roselle. What is it? Interchange. Intersection. Oh, Interdance. What, the asbestos in the mulch. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I want to get on the phones now because we always complain about, you know, when you just, and it might be something as innocuous as just dropping your phone. It might be less than a metre, K, and then mm. all of a sudden, bang, you got a crack in that screen. Mm-hmm. And I know it kills you because your phone can be so close to you and usually it's going to last a few, a few years before you get a new phone. But what I want to talk about this morning is indestructible phones. Phones that have survived some amazing things. Have you dropped it in the toilet at a nightclub, yeah. in a port a at a music festival? 13, 20, 10, what has your phone survived? Because this story is unbelievable. Did you hear about that Alaska Airlines flight? Didn't want to, but yeah, I did. Oh, what you mean when the window blew out? Is that the one you're talking about? You no, know, the door plug. The door plug yeah, um, ripped off minutes into the flight. This was last Friday. And everyone on board remained safe. Everyone's okay. It's okay. There was a couple of people hanging by one arm, but they, 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 they're all right. They're fine. Everyone will be fine. They'll get over it. Um, but oh. several objects were sucked out of the aircraft and fell 16,000 feet. One of them... Um, seems to be a iPhone. So a Washington resident, Sean Bates, took the dog for a walk last Saturday and he found an iPhone on the side of the road Mm -hmm. that was still in airplane mode with half a battery and open to a baggage claim for the plane involved in Friday's incident. So it was the Alaskan Airlines phone that fell 16,000 metres, feet, sorry, and it was... 
still fine. It's still working. It's still it was still being charged. The charge had been ripped off at the bottom, but the phone is absolutely fine. What, what if that had hit somebody? Yeah. Would have killed them. Killed wouldn't it? death would by have phone. Killed them. I mean, imagine if uh, you know how the iPhone. It's so clever. It has that function where it can tell if you pass out. So if you f- have a heart attack or fall to the ground, the iPhone, and you don't move for about thirty seconds, it calls emergency services. It does not. Yeah, it, it does. does. Kate, that's how and we tested is. this. We pushed Whipper off a roof one day, yeah. and it worked. Sixteen thousand feet up. Do you know they, was, they <laughs> even <laughs> can tell, Kate, if you try and act a fall compared to an actual fall, the phone still knows the difference. Really, it's crazy. It is just so clever. That's extraordinary. But- like, I mean, you've got to hold on to this phone forever, don't you? Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, that's an indestructible phone. And mm-hmm. I know 13, 20, 14... Well, the thing is now, I mean, they're water... Well, they're not just water resistant. They're waterproof. Yeah. They can stay underwater for a few minutes before they black out, don't they? Don't test it out. Imagine if you hit find my phone, uh, which is such a great function, and then, <laughs> then you just saw it falling through the sky. Oh, my God! <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Mel's given us a no, oh, sorry. Mel's no. given us a call from Newtown. What did your phone survive, Mel? I was on a first date and went kayaking with my partner, and I fell in. And uh, all I was worried about was my phone, and it actually survived. I went home, charged it up, and it was like it was brand new. And so yeah, iPhone 11, so it's not a brand new one. Is it true you meant to put it in sort of a container of rice? Does that help, Mel? If no. your phone gets wet. Oh, look, I didn't. I stuck it in. It said um, it's pretty dangerous to be sticking in something electrical, but I did it anyway, and I'm actually speaking from the same phone, so I didn't do anything about the rice. Clear as a whistle. Wow. Mel, Mel, are you still dating the guy that took you kayaking on the first date? Oh, I'm sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) Did he capsize as well, Mel? Was that sort of a cute laugh? So, oh, I, think what he we... was, I think he was impressed. I was just concerned about my phone not pulling in and embarrassing myself. So, I just, yeah. you know, when he rocks up into your house and he's got, got, he's his got a on. kayak on the roof racks. Oh, my goodness. I, like I thought that. we were I going to a movie. Go kayaking again. No, but no, you're in love no. with him, Mel. I love that. My wife's phone has survived a left on the roof situation where she backed out of the driveway. Car, the phone ended up on the road. She then drove off, find my phone. There it is out the front of our house. That's amazing. Not a problem. I, I think I, I, mine, mine survived falling in the toilet once and it wasn't just any, any old toilet. Oh, I, was at the cold, I was at a Coldplay concert, right, at the SFS, oh, okay. I think they were. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going, oh, I should have got this song hooked up. Have you oh, got Yellow might be appropriate. You ruined it. Sorry. Um, and so, <laughs> so I'm in the queue for the toilet. It's Coldplay. There are thousands of people there. And the yeah. toilet I score is the one that where the person before me comes out and says, oh, it's not flushing. That, that, one's, oh. that one's not flushing. I'm thinking, well, I just have to do a little whiz. I'll be Yeah, fine. I'll just top it up. I don't have to. <laughs> and oh. my phone fell oh. in to the... Absolutely full toilet at the S at the SFS at the Coldplay yeah. concert. In the back, I could hear them playing. Well, it was all yellow. Okay, not very well delivered, um, <laughs> but it survived because I had to stand there and think: Am I going to rush out and see Chris yeah. on stage, or am I am I deep diving into that oh, that class. kind of and um, wading into what that toilet paper? Oh, I had to reach in and get it. If only they'd written could- a song, a toilet full of. Oh, stars. Good effort. Good. That's a good effort. Because you wouldn't have taken enough selfies of of yourself <laughs> at the concert yeah, what, by then. What were you, you doing in the toilet with the phone out? Um, it, was in my, a, it was in my pocket. You're a mate of Chris Martin, so you weren't taking yeah. a selfie to send to him, were you? Nowhere. At the concert, taking a break to think about you? No. This photo is about, this photo's about phones. Not Jeez, Chris. if it did take hey, a photo Chris. on the way down, it would have been a weird one to send back. Oh, that's for sure. He would have written back that. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to head off stage for a minute. I've just got something from Australia's favourite, Kate Ritchie, my friend, who I've fantasised about for a long time. Call me, Kate. Really appreciate the toilet self. Well, don't turn the music up. No, let's go to the song. Has he ever sent you a selfie? Has he ever sent one back, Kate? He doesn't do that. <laughs> Denise in Woolaway, tell us about an indestructible phone. Good morning, guys. Happy New Year. To you too, Denise. 
So I was on site at Western Sydney Airport and I drive a water cart, like a, a work truck. And yep. when I was filling up the truck, my phone fell out of my pocket and I drove away. Obviously, I couldn't find the phone. Yeah. Came back to look for it and I was after driving over it, but it was after sinking into the mud. It still works. Like, it still works to this day. Like, I had to dry it out and I had to get a new screen protector, but it mm-hmm. wasn't broken or nothing. Oh, Denise. So, so it, it was driven over multiple times, Denise, into the mud and still survived. Well, I drove over it. Like, it, it would have been me was the only person that drove over because I was the only person wow. in that area. Just so once. it sank in. So I think that's what saved it. But it was wet and the screen protector was broken, but it survived. Denise, that's an extraordinary, extraordinary oh, story. Your oh, accents mate. are woeful. No, you know, you join in. <laughs> Why don't you join you in? Well, I don't do accents because you know I know I'm not good at it. So can you stop <sighs> persisting Denise, with the accents? I think that's an extraordinary story, Denise. And you're running in the running to go to Tokyo to see Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great you know what? Just nah, great accent. Just when you said it, you know what? Just when you get excited for the year ahead and that, you come back to work oh, and then I know. God. you have moments like that. That's funny. You go, what am I, do, what am I do doing? The with Chinese my life? cleaner. You don't want to hear that one. No one wants that. We're... What's on the board? What, what about have... that Russian cleaner you've got? Do that accent you did off air I the other day. I don't have a cleaner. Yeah, you do. 13, 2014, no, indestructible radio host. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, we've tried to push one out of plenty of planes and he just keeps coming back. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Over the holidays, uh, great that my wife and I settled into um, a bit of homing. Uh, we're getting jobs done around the house, mate. You know what it's like, picking up the tools and knocking it on the head. <laughs> Oh, man. Is oh, it handyman. Handyman. Is that what you call Strap it? Strap it on the tool belt. Homing. Yeah. Homing. Um, what did you do? Give, give us some that? examples. Right, here's a great example, and this is where things went wrong that I wanted to talk about the other day. I've never done this before, and it was bloody hard. Went out to Flower Power Mascot. I think I messaged you going, my weekend's complete on the Flower that, Power. I mean, I see a message from Whipper come up, and it's a massive cactus photo of a big cactus. Bought a cactus. Now, yeah. And they I are lo- great. They are succulent. great there, I have they to say. Waste. They are lovely. Yeah. Do you have the membership card How's where the... you get $5 off yeah, when you, you go do. back? You yeah. get within the next sort of um, six weeks, I think you can use your bonus dollars that you get when you pay for it. Cactuses, bloody expensive. Oh, they are. I said to her, there was a big one, there was a small one. I said, how, how, what's the difference in age here? And she said, oh, that small one will take forever to grow. And I said, I'll buy the big one. That stung the hip pocket. But I, here's the thing. And to any landscape gardener out there, anybody doing a bit of homing, Getting a cactus into a pot is a very, very tricky move. So what I decided to do, because the cactus was going on the balcony, was to actually bring the pot outside, put the mulch in, then trying to get the cactus out of the original pot. That was the easiest part, right? Because there's a certain soil for cactus, isn't there? You I need a softer yeah. soil. Yeah. Succulent, a succulent, succulent soil. soil. soil yeah. um, quick question. The question is with Kate. When you have to, when you're uh, putting this on the balcony, mm. is this an upstairs balcony? Yeah, yeah So it, it has to come back into the house and up the stairs? Well, did, it had to come back into the house and through the main living area. You know that balcony out the back there where the barbecue is? I had oh. to get it on a trolley because I wasn't able to pick up the pot because that's how big it was. So Gosh. I've got it on a trolley. So, but I put the so- I put the pot on the trolley first, and yeah. then I put the soil in. Then I cut down the plast- each side of the plastic pot outside, outside, so I could get my hands onto the roots of the cactus and put it into the pot. All going yeah. well. You this didn't fill huge. the pot with dirt, though. Did yeah, you? I did. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. Okay. Okay. So then here's the problem. We're moving through the house. The pot's weighing, I don't know, 100 kilos plus. Mm. We I don't then, think it's 100 yeah, kilos. Yeah, can, if it's 100 kilos, Giant you're not pot moving full it, of so. dirt, right? Yeah, On a okay. 35. Lisa and I are moving this cactus yeah. through the house. We get it in position off the ba- on the balcony. We then have to get it off the trolley. Now, you can tilt the trolley. Don't get me wrong. But then someone needs to hold it. How do you hold a cactus? Like, how do you hold a cactus? I went and got a pair of Lisa's stockings. And I said, let's wrap these stockings around the cactus. You hold on to the stockings to hold the cactus in position. We'll tilt the trolley and get it off. Why do you need okay. to hold the cactus? Because it's going to fall over. It's not cemented in the pot. But it's got dirt in it. Haven't yeah. you? You need to push the dirt down it's so it compacted. supports the roots. And also, if you're such a homey guy... Mm. 
Don't you have gardening gloves? Didn't have gardening gloves. At all in the house. Cactus, as we tried to get off the trolley, fell off the trolley. The pot falls to the side, taking me with it. Yeah. And pinning, pinning my left shoulder to the ground. You are- God, this is. I'm oh, on the is this ground. In the, is this is this in the Rose Bay local newspaper? No, it oh, should be, mate. Massive. Put it in the Beast How magazine. Does a pot, oh Beast. Yeah. How so, does the pot pin you? The cactus had pinned me to the ground. I looked up yep. at Lisa and went, "How do you think that went?" I then hop up. She has to remove needles from the cactus. From mm. my shoulder, I've got pricks all through my arms. I've got. A <laughs> I thought you were going to say all through the oh, yeah. office. I've got a needle. Well, that was your, that was your nickname in high school, wasn't it? The old oh. secondhand dartboard. I've got a needle still stuck in my shoulder, which I can't get out. And I <sighs> dug one out of my thumb yesterday because they broke off in me. Yeah, that's what happens when you garden without gloves. Oh, They're, my God. You'll get a little infection that you may never get rid of. I know I know people who have got thorns yeah. in their fingers and they're just like these kind of protruding, like, wart, Kate Ritchie. wart-looking things. No, no. They, they go through your body, Kate. They mm. can go through your body. So people have stepped on, like, cactus pins mm. and they can go all the way up through your body and pierce your heart. Oh, my God. You. I was pinned down like a broken man under a giant green truck. And then, reading about it, you're right, Fitz. People get infections. People have limbs amputated. Kate Ritchie, this one person went along to have a diagnosis. Secondary bacterial infection had their hand amputated. This think, guy here... I don't think that's going to happen. And also, you're completely making this up because I'm looking at your arm here. And, I'm, uh, you know, this year I wanted to come back and I'm not commenting on what people look like. But you are a ha- you're a hairy mammoth. And um, so the pins of a cactus are not going to get through that, well, they are. that cardigan the- of man hair. <laughs> a cardigan of man hair. Don't Actually, think, that's... Don't you think... That's, this bloke goes on to talk about how his right knuckle was stung by the creeping devil. Why do they have these horrible names too, cactuses? His hand blew up and once again, another um, another limb was removed. What about this guy? His name's Dave. He went out shooting in Mount Pleasant in Arizona. He shot a giant cactus which fell on him and pierced the back of his neck, killing him. <laughs> Death by yeah. cactus. Well, that's his own fault for shooting a cactus. Tommy, you said... Yeah. Come back with some new ideas for 2024. Oh, yeah, I did, I did. I would like to submit this as a never been done before phone topic oh. on the radio. Is it when, a cardigan of man hair? I really like that idea. When were you injured <laughs> by a cactus? Have we ever done that? No, no, that we haven't. Well, I, thought, I thought we'd heard that. the story. You've no, been yet, banging on for about now, five like, or six well, minutes. Well, I'm asking everybody else to try and relate and, rest. and encourage everybody to come on board. I love this. I love this stuff. But in story. actual fact, we mm. could do a whole half hour from 7 to 7.30. I hope Brendan's listening. Well. About gardening because, oh my goodness, have you ever been pricked by a bougainvillea? <laughs> <laughs> Fitz in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.